Hey, aloha, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studio for another exciting episode of Security Matters. We are with um, Jason Wright today, and he is with Open Path, but you may also know him from the security fail stuff that he tracks for all of us around the industry um, online. Um, I, um, I definitely want him to, to give you his history, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the great stuff that Open Path is doing, and uh, I definitely want to get into some of the reasons behind these images that he posts, which I think you know, let all of us reflect on some of the things we've done right and some of the thing we, things that we've done wrong as an industry. So, Jason, I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I know James drives a, a hard ship over there, so I'm glad he gave you some time off uh, to join us on, think, on uh, Security Matters. Uh, so, if you wouldn't mind, um, I know we don't give it all away on secure on uh, social media these days, but maybe kind of take those folks who aren't familiar with, with you um, through your history and then uh, in the industry and then how you got the open path. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. And thanks for inviting me to join you here on Security Matters. Um, this is a great forum to be able to discuss some, some of the things I've been doing on LinkedIn as well. And a little bit about myself. Um, how, what have I not done? Uh, let's see. Uh, I've been in the security industry for quite a while. and probably one of the few rare people who have now worked in all four verticals. You know, I've been the end user. I've been uh, the integrator. Um, I've been an integrator to a couple of the Fortune 5 companies here in the San Francisco area. And then I've been a security consultant, um, and now I'm working with the hardware manufacturer end of, this, of the program. So I think it puts me in a unique view perspective of the industry. But um, before I was in security, I was actually in quality control and electronics manufacturing. And so I'm an ISO auditor, life safety, HMS, hazmat, and did it all. So kind of come at the world in a, in a different point of view and solving new problems in, in different ways. And, you're right, the the CCTV fails and, and all the other security fails, I, I, IT fails, sign fails, door fails. I kind of kind of all just like initiated over the it evolved over time. Um, but the the way they all really came about is was just you know working with new green people in the industry and they're like I saw you know some of the senior guys would be showing them pictures of bad installs and they'd be all laughing about it. Like you know what, more people need to see this because we don't live long enough to make all these mistakes ourselves. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, learning from other people's mistakes and the green guy is going, oh, wait, if, if I do it that way, I'm going to get ridiculed. So it really <laughs> makes them understand that you know, there's a quality level of this industry. And, and you know, if, you know, from a my side, looking at it from the electronics quality or a consultant side, it's if, if it looks this bad on the outside of the building, what does it look like in the walls or the parts I can't see? So mm. it's all about raising that that level of performance, and it, if we all make a clean, beautiful work, and we get proud of it, and we'll show it off too. So I do both. I do the goods and the bads, and, but typically the <laughs> goods don't the goods don't get shown off as much as they probably should, but some of them do get shown off. That's um, awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, just, just I was going to say go it's, um, <laughs> it's important. Well, it's important that that we do have those learning lessons, and like you said, the good and the bad. I've often talked about how the like the AV industry, for example. You know, when they leave a project, you know, there's great sound and huge screens, and everybody's all happy and excited. And when the security guys leave, they're like, "Do the cameras work? Okay, great, thank you." You know, so nobody mm -hmm. really sees the work, especially if you're a lay person. You know, and to your point, you've been the end user before as well. So if you don't know you know, what it ought to look like. Sometimes you walk away thinking everything's fine and you've not really been delivered uh, something good. So the QC team comes behind the installer and goes, hey, uh, I know the customer's happy, but I'm not happy with what we've done here and here's why. So I, I love that, that sort of that credibility for the industry, that little checkpoint that we can bring. Um, you said you did some uh, auditing, some ISO stuff in the manufacturing realm as well. So did, did that um, yeah. pique your eye for looking for these things that you've got further along in the security industry? Oh yes, um, that, I think that I think that really helped because I used to go in and audit multiple. I'm well, I still auditor to multiple certification levels, but yeah, you're right. You you're learning about what what should be good, and wait, like, this doesn't match the documentation. Or you know, for you and me or anybody, when you look at a camera on the outside of I don't know the fast food place you're going to go get dinner from later this week, and you just see that above the drive through that camera that's hanging by the wire, you're like, who installed that? <laughs> So you're, it's just that you see them everywhere. Um, I think we're going to post some of my pictures and the very first one I ever posted, I think is the first picture. So. Oh, wow. Um, 
Well, with that, um, let's go. Um, let's let's see an image. Um, what do you, what do you got for us? What's first? So he was one of the first ones I ever. It was I think it was the very first one I ever posted. Um, and and I started the hashtag CCTV fill with those on LinkedIn. Um, that one probably didn't get as many views as the ones today, but the ones today get a lot of comments to them. And I must say the the, the pictures I post, they tell a story in theirself. I don't need to post like a story. I all make sure that, you know, there's, I don't say who the customers are. I don't show who the owners are, where they're located. Um, I, I, yeah, they should be able to be standalone on themselves. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so when I see this, I think, first of all, the, the, the facility manager is not paying attention or it's, it's a system that's been abandoned and not properly decommissioned, right? There's a, there's a few reasons well, there's not many reasons why that should still be there unless it got decommissioned this morning and just no one's done yep. it. No one's done the takedown shit. Yeah, that one's in San Francisco on the side of the street. <laughs> so I'm not going to say where it is, but yeah. It's, oh, wow. I just, I just walked off the train and looked up. I'm like, oh, there we go. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. But, yeah, um, um, yeah, you're right. Security person, if they were receiving that video feed, what were they looking at before? And they're currently not seeing what they were originally targeting. So there's, there's lots of people that are not upset about this in, in the chain, I'm sure. Yeah, I've, I've visited with um, teams that have guards sitting around all night. And I'm like, well, why don't you let them go check the views of the cameras to make sure nothing's changed? You know, you've got your, your image standard that should be there for day and night shots. And in Hawaii, you know, the sun moves around a lot, right? So those shots can get That's changed. True. Those guards are sitting there. Why don't you let them go check the reference images against the cameras all night? They're not, what else are they doing when nothing's happening, right? So it's an, well, this one should have shown up for somebody you know, if they're checking the video at all. <laughs> well, I've, I've even found cameras behind, you know, the tree had grown up in front of them. You're like, yeah. <laughs> how was the last time you viewed? Because there's a tree now in front of the camera. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, you know, does, does anybody going to call and have that thing trimmed like in the last five years or whatever? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look at the next one. What else we got? Oh, uh, yeah. So this, <laughs> yeah. This one and then and the next image where... Uh, yeah, I, I found those in a bookstore. I'm not going to say where it is, but <laughs> yeah, that that a whole bunch of these. It was a a dome camera, but they had them on pedestal arms. Like they took the pedestal, the bullet camera off and put the dome on top of the original mount. <laughs> wow, wow! And hey, what do you think? It's do you think it's actually focused downwards at something? Just looking, just way bent over there. I, I no, hard to it's, say. I, it's hard to see what they're trying to even view, but it defeats the whole purpose of putting a dome when you mount it yeah. to their old bullet mount. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and then at the sign below it level up, right? Like as if point the camera up. That's interesting. See, was that a chalkboard or something? That's so funny. Oh wow! Let's let's move on to the next one. These are these are um, interesting. Oh wow! Um, this is a little hard to away. see. Yeah, I took this one in um, I think in Oakland. Actually, uh, Chad posted this one as well too. He saw he saw the same one in the wild, ah. <laughs> and uh, it's hard to tell, but it has a mini dome mounted underneath the old housing, and then they oh, took the wow. old camera and pointed it up, and then put a dome underneath it. So instead of wow. they mounted a camera to an old camera, but it, from a distance, it, it looks like it's pointing up at the sky. They just want to use the old camera. Is that an old EMI housing? Oh my gosh! Yeah, it looks like it. Wow! And so that's this is uh, you know industry standards tell us we can't or that we shouldn't do these type of things obviously this is someone who's tried to say oh just make it work right somebody took got some marching orders just just figure it out no we don't have any money so make it work so they probably extended the little cable from inside the old camera to just to that little one there and the power and there you go they right drill, like, drill like the whole amount of the housing. camera to the existing camera yeah wow yeah maybe um this and we see this when we let uh when like the owner has done the work themselves or whatever they got their right. their their yeah, maintenance guy goes out up. and does it <laughs> there's a diy coming up yeah okay let's have a look <laughs> smile so, your camera. Yeah. so i found this one it had a really nice sign um this was in san jose and it has a nice sign all the way around the building it had these dome cameras now the dome has gone gray <laughs> from, yeah, it looks from black. sitting in the sun so the, i'm like what do you mean they can see they can't see me with this <laughs> <laughs> yeah you stand there and smile and wave and nothing ever happens there, there was four wow. cameras all around this building and all of them looked like this it was wow like, that that may be maybe a manuf maybe the polycarbonate went bad you think the the manufacturer yeah, it was in the full sun. rated 
Yeah. Maybe it wasn't UV rays, it was indoor, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, yeah all of them had gone like brown. You, 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 wow. There's no way the, the camera could view out. But yeah. you talked about, you know, reviewing your camera feeds to see if they're still seeing what they're originally viewing. Yeah. And this guy just thinks his cameras went bad and really just his little dome enclosure went bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. That's, um, and that, that, you know, that indoor camera outdoors, you do see that a lot, unfortunately. Usually they're flooded, you know, by the time you see them, there'll be water in the dome. Um, yeah, somebody trying that, to yeah. save money or they are the, it got specified with the wrong part number and then no one actually paid attention. The installer should catch that minimally, but they don't until they just mount them. You know, they get orders, just do, just hang it now. We'll fix it later. And then it never gets fixed or whatever. That, uh, that indoor, right. indoor dome outdoors is a, is a real problem for people. So pay attention to that one. Pay the money for the outdoor enclosure, folks. Yes, it's full of water. It's not going to work. <laughs> I actually have found two or th three of them in the wild that still had the wrapper on the outside of the dome. Like oh, the they plastic? never took the wrapper. <laughs> so you're like, well, how did you focus it? It's still got the wrapper plastic on it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so they, so they didn't, right? You know, it's like, oh, it's just, that's just how it looks. You know, they get that excuse. My, which means yeah, which, which shows me that someone no one ever the installer never reviewed the feed and verified its focusing the field of view has been adjusted it still has that you know packaging protective film over the wrapper mounted yeah. and stuck they left they walked away and left it up yeah yeah and the end user obviously never looked or never had any idea what sort of quality they should be getting or something i can't right. even imagine what the view looked like this makes no sense sometimes these things we see and again could be an end user did the installation mm -hmm. thinks he's got it right you know, and then that's as good as it gets, you know, <laughs> always sad. Uh, what do we got next, gang? I think we got a couple coming up here and they all have. Oh, wow. I love the mic. <laughs> yeah, we got sound on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Rothrock is rolling over in his grave right now. Yeah, I posted this one um, a few months ago and it, it had hundreds of comments to it. I mean, I must say that the comments to my posts are worth a read. Um, yeah, the I had had people call me in the last couple of weeks, laughing in stitches, saying I haven't had a good laugh with a cry in a long time. So the comments alone are are, are pretty good and worth the read. That is so awesome. Yeah, they they're probably better, more comedians than I am. It's good when when you know when people get that <laughs> gut reaction to things and they just come off the top of their head with what it looks like, or they they offer you a nice metaphor. You know, it's good. It's always good to see the comments, and that's a. That looks like a fixed camera mounted on a on a pan tilt of some type, or it's I can't, it I don't know. I, that doesn't look familiar to me. Yeah, it's like a, like a pan tilt mount with an old camera with a microphone attached to it for sound. Wow. Well, I wonder if the mic still works. Someone's got to tell people that there's cameras out there with microphones built in them now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had get a camera Jeff Donnie on here to talk about audio for for these types of scenes. You know, where you need that command and control and you need that audio. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, this we're, next, we're hitting... this next one's got a good stack on it. Okay. Well, let's, um, I tell you what, let's see. Ah, I remember seeing that before. But before we talk about that one, let's take a quick break. Uh, we'll pay some bills and we'll be back in about one minute. Stick around, gang. Aloha, I'm Mitch Ewan, host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy on ThinkTech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy is about following the many clean energy initiatives in Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy appears weekly on ThinkTech Hawaii at 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. We'll see you then, aloha. Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Security Matters. We're talking with Jason Wright, and we're looking at security fails. We were talking about some camera fails. This next one is a sort of a, I can't tell if it's all the guy had in his truck. I don't know, but let's take a look at this one. It's an interesting one. Yeah, there you go. You got the conduit there. You had a box, you know, you're supposed to mount to. Uh, it doesn't look like the right, right mount anyway, but um, I guess it wasn't the right height or he needed to get down below something. So, you know, it's just a whole gang of, that's taking gang box to the extreme, right? <laughs> Six gang boxes on that one. Yeah. 
It probably costs more than an amount if they were to just put it in. <laughs> I, I, I'm wondering, yeah, because you would normally have a bit of a pedestal there with, um, you know, the correct pedestal enclosure. Um, that's, an, that's an interesting idea. Uh, maybe just get it done. You know, I, I, um, we're in Hawaii, right? And so our installation sites typically aren't that far away. Sometimes we have to fly to the outer island. So you, you got to make do mm-hmm. sometimes. But I do have, you know, I know installers on the mainland sometimes will drive four hours, you know, to do an install. And then you get there, you don't have what you need, and you got to make it work. But wouldn't you come back and fix this one? <laughs> you know, the next time you're out in that area for a service call or something. If you need a game box, <laughs> you know where to get some. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know where to get them from your last site. Maybe he was just leaving them in a stash there. That's a pretty good one. Uh, what do we got next coming up? Oh wow! And and why don't people take the old equipment out? I just what they weren't paid for removal. I mean, what a mess. Well, I guess it already gets them to where they want to be. Or uh, yeah, this one they they put a four game box and then mounted the camera to it because it didn't fit to the old mount. So it's replacing an old bullet camera. Yeah. I uh, I I my, my brain doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, if you come to the Honolulu and you go through the Honolulu airport, you're gonna see a bunch of this kind of mess here. Um, I don't know if the state wouldn't contract with those folks to do the removals. Um, it's a sad site over there for especially security minded folks that show up in our, our airport here um, and they look around and see things not too dissimilar from this they have to be I, I, I found posts in airports before as well um, there was one with a, a a nice camera next to the out the, the network port and the camera was just plugged into the network port and I'm six four. I could reach up and reach it it was it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't over eight feet high and I can just reach over and unplug the camera Wow. Yeah. In, in the airport. Right. Yeah. It's interesting in airport, how many yeah. how many systems end up in, you know, there's, you know, THS, TSA and DHS and then the local authorities. So there's so many different systems. And I don't I don't like there's, to criticize, but you should if you're an end user or if you're a municipality, pay to get the work done properly. You know, fund the work so that it gets removed neatly, it gets it reinstalled cleanly. Um, there's there's a workman like way to do this stuff, which is why um, Jason's gone to the effort that he's gone to to display this stuff for people uh it's informative for us at all levels (laughs) well we we paid millions of dollars for these beautiful buildings and architecture and fittings and security needs to blend in and work within these architectures to the same quality level they use for the glass and the windows and the trims and the carpets and we we need to be just for the same quality as them yeah and it makes me wonder what what do they think about the security industry when they see our stuff installed like that right like even if someone who doesn't know what it ought to look like can look at that last picture and go, wow, what, what were they doing or who did that? I don't want that in my lobby. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, wow. What do we got next? Let's take a look. Um, This is one that's about a mile from my house. (laughs) They had milk. There's a, a bracket on a piece of fence board with a camera mounted on it. And this, this place had like five or six of them around it. (laughs) Wow. So that's your DIY. Probably they did it themselves, probably. Wow. Will it, do you think, will it hold up? It looks, is, is it upside down? It's, it's mounted on a, um, on a bracket, and they put a board sticking out. Instead of mounting it directly to the building, they mounted it to a board. And kind of, what are they thinking? I don't know. Wow. But it's been up there for over a year or two. Now, if you're that homeowner, is that, is that a commercial property? Or, but, it's I mean, a commercial it's, property. It has to look terrible, you know, to well, the, you, to you the see eye. What, that's the entryway. That's the entryway to this commercial place. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe they, is that one of the ones you think where they got what they paid for or something? Like, or, or, uh, I can't or, or they had somebody on their team who said that they know what they're doing. And Yeah. We'll put a little shelf there and mount the camera to it. It'll be fine. Wow. There, there's three or four of them like that. Wow. That seems like a little bit of extra work, maybe, or. Uh, maybe they were maybe they're trying to tuck it up under that ledge or something. I don't I don't know. It's interesting stuff. It's amazing. And this is in Northern California, by the way. So I'm not feeling so bad about some of the stuff I've seen around Hawaii now that I'm seeing some of this. <laughs> you, yeah, you uh, walk around, and you know another thing these security things do is raises your situational awareness. Look at look at other people do and learn from other people's mistakes and um, use them for training for your own teams too. And it's a, these are great training exercises for people. And if you're having like a, your, your, your technicians or whatever your class before they start, 
put up one of these cameras because the new green guys will be going, wait, I don't want to be the one to ridicule. So they learned they learned to do better quality work too by by sharing these images with each other. Yeah, and teach them to ask questions, right? We talk about that. Technicians um historically, I'll just use that word, have a um a pride, a sort of a pride about their work and a pride about understanding how to do what they do. And oftentimes some of them aren't as good about sharing the what and the why and all of that that went into that, you know, 15 or 20 years of experience that they have and sharing that with the new guy. They think it's funnier to just let him do it wrong and then let it let him be the guy everyone's ridiculing with the pictures, you know, in the meeting at the beginning of the week. So um I I'm real really big on uh, ask questions. You know, if you don't know, if you haven't been provided the installation manual, it isn't like the information is not available. So if you, you know, for if you're new to our industry out there and you want to do something or have something done and you're not sure how, just ask someone. At, take a look at the manual, if nothing else. That'll show you what it ought to look like and how it should be done. Um, and, it's amazing. And, Go ahead. I want to think, and if you don't know how it's done, ask someone because you hear you and I are, you know, laughing at these images, but at the same time, are going, why didn't take the old mount down? You know, and someone wasn't told that. Someone yeah. didn't ask those questions. And making sure that, you know, that if you don't know how it's to be done or should be done, then there's things to ask and ways to get it done right. Yeah, you, they show up out there with that scope of work that says install, right? So they're looking at it like, okay, i got to install. It doesn't say remove anywhere. <laughs> so that's that literal interpretation, right, of, of some, some project manager watching out for scope creep or something. You never know, right? Yeah, that's an extra five minutes of work. Yeah, <laughs> which which you should always donate, I think. Oh, wow. What do we got next? Oh, <laughs> I remember seeing this one. <laughs> so, yeah, I do bad signs as well. Um, this one I posted just recently. Um, you know, there's a thing called a Norman door. <laughs> and the okay. Norman door is that if a sign needs a sign to tell you to push or pull, it was probably designed wrong. So uh -huh. Don Norman, he, he was... um. One of the initial people, one of the initial founders of uh, like the way Apple products work. And so okay. it should be intuitively native. If it's got a handle, you pull. If it's got a flat plate, you push. And if it's got, I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to say with this sign. Both. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you would have been better without the sign. You still had a 50-50 chance. With the yeah. sign, I think it goes down less. <laughs> yeah, or the sign could just say figure it out, you know, or something. I don't even know. It's and one pull and one of them will work. That would have been easier. So. Yeah. A bit of a, a bit of a mockery there. That's crazy. Oh wow! So we're moving into it looks like some door problems. What else we got? Oh, that oh. IT installs. Oh gosh, this wow. one. It goes around the corner. The cans on its side. They cut new holes. You got exposed wiring going around a corner. Yeah, I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> uh, how did? How does that work? I mean, if you accepted that. that yeah, I, get, I mean, if you accepted that job, you can see that everything should be in the in an enclosure, and then here we branch from enclosure to enclosure. So I know someone extended or added, or they did something to a system there. Exactly. Shouldn't that be in pipe, maybe? Or you know, we yep. make we we have facility facilitation yeah. for table management, right? Oh my gosh, interesting. That's um that's a pretty good one. That's a good lesson for for anybody that that uh, you know looking at an installation. At least this guy wow. here used gutters. What happened? <laughs> what? Oh, to hide all this the gutters. the gutters. <laughs> but he used gutters. <laughs> that is interesting. Uh, because he forgot to saw said, that day. Yeah, somebody said, I, don't, I just don't want to see the wire. <laughs> Put gutters up, but he forgot to yeah. saw. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is terrible. I mean, truly Wait. terrible. And next? Oh, oh yeah. The, know, this the is how valuable IDFs. the data. Yeah, this is how valuable the data closet was, right? Yeah, and then there's another one coming up, which I just posted recently on LinkedIn. This one. Oh and yeah, yeah, that one's got a lot of issues with that. You know, they they started with a backboard at, at the initial construction phase. They didn't they didn't put you know the fireproof paint on. You have to do that here, but you know at least they started well. But it expanded pretty badly, pretty rapidly, and. You know, you have to spend a little time in that room periodically, you would think. So you might look at, think about cleaning some of that up. <laughs> well, if you need to flush the cash, it's really easy to do. So. <laughs> uh, how many comments did you get on that one? Do you recall? I probably have thousands. Um, there was over 600 comments on that post, and it had over 70,000 views. Nice. Were, they, were most of them clean, or were there any takedowns? 
No, that one that one could invite some of those uh the, those uh, off color comments you might say. <laughs> Actually, um, I only had to remove two ads on that post because right people on. tried posting uh, advertisements to it. So. Oh, I see. Right on. Right on. Great stuff. Well, we are winding down here. Um, Jason, what, uh, in your experience, you know, I haven't been out there, haven't seen this kind of stuff and trying to expose it. What, what, um, what can you share with the audience? You know, what's their sort of the takeaway that they should think about this? And especially if you could, you know, from those sort of four perspectives, you know, from the manufacturing side, um, the installation side, the end user side, um, you know, what, uh, what should they be learning when they, when they take a look and, and, and ponder the comments on some of these images? Well, it's about, you know, we're, we're all in the industry to be the best we can. And I think it's if we were just raised the, the quality of the work, view things from the end customer's perspective. You know, if this was your site, would you be proud with it when you walk away? And would you be willing to invite your customers to see your other customers to come see your work? And, you know, you'd be, be proud to what you leave behind because this is your legacy and what you do. Yeah, and and, uh, and 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 then and then I also like to learn from other people's mistakes and see what you can find because they're everywhere and you're gonna go around and look up and find something bad soon, I'm sure. And <laughs> and I'm happy to share them with me or others. There's, there's we we like to collect the, the these kind of images and it's it, it's it's a fun, interesting side hobby, but it's uh, it drives a good, interesting topic in the industry and hopefully it makes the whole security industry more accepting and and hopefully we can help remove a lot of these people even though some of them are diy and we don't have much control over but yeah and in our industry needs that you know we should always we should be striving to become better all the time and learning from uh what we've done wrong and then learning from what we've done right and then learning how to get better continuous improvement is uh kind of one of those buzzwords of um you know the the, the supply chain risk management world and cybersecurity world uh, but the in the security industry itself um, should be consistently striving and the the leave behind, you know, the things that we see, the work that is there, that is our deliverable. And that's how we get measured. Um, very few people get to see the actual functionality, right? The the, the, the software side, the client side of that work. Um, so we'll, uh, many, many, many more see the hardware side and the install side. So clean it up. Use these lessons, Jason. It's great stuff that you're doing. Appreciate your dedication to the industry, trying to make us all better. Um, and, and together we can all get better. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. So thank you so much. Appreciate your time today. Uh, everybody out there, have a great, safe Tuesday. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Aloha.